this video explains about the adjustments that to be done under uh, final accounts already i have uploaded a video which uh, talks about the introduction to final accounts uh, what are direct expenses what are indirect expenses how to prepare trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet if you did not watch that video the link i am giving it in the description box do watch that video and come back to this video for a better understanding now moving on to this video these are the adjustments which i am going to explain in this video these are all some of the important adjustments or we can even say repeated adjustments which are being asked in questions so let's see how to treat with this adjustment before moving on to treating this adjustment i just wanted to clear you one point whatever adjustment is given in the question that adjustment will appear twice in your answer will appear twice in your statement that is the adjustment will appear either in the trading account and balance sheet or pnl account and balance sheet so it will have two effects okay so with this i am moving on to uh, this table uh, is uh, this table shows you how to treat a particular uh, adjustment whether it will be shown in the trading account and balance sheet or profit and loss account and balance sheet uh, so you will be able to understand this table better at the end of this video now moving on to the adjustment the first adjustment that i have taken is closing stock closing stock is a very important adjustment and invariably in all the problems you will have this adjustment so in the question in the adjustment it will be given as closing stock is a rupees some amount for example it is given as 20000 rupees so how to record this adjustment it will be shown in the trading account so this is the format of the trading account in the trading account it will be shown in the credit side by closing stock okay write the amount in the amount column so as i already told you an adjustment will have two effects okay so the first effect is in the trading account the next is in the balance sheet in the balance sheet in the asset side of the balance sheet we will record closing stock closing stock we will write the amount in the amount column so closing stock is a simple easy adjustment and without this adjustment you will not get any problem at all so this is how we will adjust closing stock the next important adjustment is outstanding expenses what is the meaning of this outstanding expense it means unpaid expense that is we have incurred a particular expense but we did not pay we have to make the payment so how to treat this outstanding expense this expense outstanding expense has to be added back to the respective expense see in the uh, if wages is outstanding wages is a direct expense where will we show wages we will show wages in the trading account and in the trading account debit side we will record all expenses so here we will record two wages see okay in the question it is given as in the trial balance it is given as 5000 rupees now in the adjustment outstanding wages is given as 500 rupees how would you treat it add outstanding wages in the debit side of the trading account in the inner column write 500 already 5000 was given in the trial balance wages now 500 is outstanding so totally 5500 is the amount of wages we will bring it to the outer column so if the outstanding expense is a direct expense it will be shown in the trading account okay if the outstanding expense is an indirect expense for example salaries is outstanding we will show it in the pnl account in the pnl account debit side only we will record all expenses so two salary say in the question in the trial balance it is given as some 8000 rupees now in the adjustment outstanding salaries is given as add outstanding salary it is given as some 1000 rupees okay what will we do we will add it bring the answer to the outer column 9000 rupees so the treatment for outstanding expenses is we will add it with the respective expense if it is a direct expense we will show it in the trading account if it is a indirect expense we will show it in the profit and loss account and we will add it this is the treatment for outstanding 
expense. Okay. So, and another thing we have to show twice, right? Say if wage is outstanding, we are showing it in the trading account. Where will we record it again? We will record it in the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, outstanding wages. We will record it as 500 rupees. Okay. So, we have recorded in the trading account. Now, we have recorded in the balance sheet. So, twice we have recorded. Is that clear? Okay. For salaries is outstanding. So, salaries, one effect is we have recorded in the P&L account. The other effect is we will record it in the balance sheet also. Under liability side, outstanding salaries, 1000 rupees. Write the amount in the outer column. So, once it is shown in the P&L account, the second effect is in the balance sheet, liability side. So, I hope you understood how to record outstanding expenses, paid expenses. What is the meaning of prepaid expenses? Prepaid expenses is we have not incurred the expense, but we have made payment in advance. So, it means we have paid in advance. Okay, outstanding is it is unpaid. Prepaid is paid in advance. Outstanding we will add to the respective expense. Prepaid, we will deduct from the respective expense. Okay, so where will we record expense? We will record expense in the debit side. In the profit and loss account or in the trading account, we will record expenses in the debit side. So if there is any prepaid expenses, we will deduct it from the respective expense account. For example, if insurance is prepaid, how will you record Insurance is an indirect expense. So, we will show it in the P&L account to insurance. Since we have adjustment, we are writing the amount in the inner column. Say, some 3000 rupees is the amount of insurance. And in the adjustment, it is given as prepaid insurance is 500 rupees. So, less prepaid. Prepaid insurance, 500 so, 3000 minus 500, 2500 in the outer column. Okay. Outstanding, you will add. Prepaid, you will deduct. And where is the other effect? Once we have shown it in the PNL account, second, we will have to show it in the asset side. Prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance, we will write 500 rupees. Okay, outstanding, we will add it and show it in the liability side. Prepaid, we will deduct it and show it in the asset side. So, I hope you understood how to record outstanding expenses and prepaid expenses. The next expense that I have taken is accrued income. Okay, accrued income, usually we will record income in the credit side of the P&L account. I have not taken trading account here because in the trading account we will record only one receipt that is sales. For sales we will not have accrued. So it will be shown only in the profit and loss account. Okay and in the profit and loss account where will we record receipts we will record it in the credit side. And what is the meaning of accrued income? Income earned but not received. We have earned this income but we did not receive but not received. An income earned, but we did not receive it. So, what should we do? We should add it with the respective income. Okay. For example, uh, rent. So, write by rent received. Say the amount is some 10,000 rupees. And in the adjustment, it is given as Accrued rent, that is rent earned but not received is some 2000 rupees. So, what will we do? We will add. We will add accrued rent. For example, I am taking it as 2000 rupees. So, add it. In the outer column, you will write it as 12,000. And the other adjustment is in the balance sheet. Okay. This will be written on the asset side, accrued rent. Amount is 2000 rupees. Okay. Then income received in advance. Income received in advance means we did not earn that income. Even before earning it, we have received prepayment. We have uh, received it 
before in advance itself. So what is the adjustment? We have to deduct it. Okay. For example, interest by interest. Say the amount of interest is 5000 rupees. And we have received income in advance, interest in advance. Interest received in advance. Say for example, you take it as some 1000 rupees. So deduct it, bring 4000 to the outer column. Where will you show it? You will show it in the balance sheet liability side as interest received in advance. Amount is 1000 rupees. Okay. So accrued income, we will add it. Income received in advance, we will deduct it. The next adjustment that I have taken is uh, interest on capital. Usually in the question, in the adjustment, it will be given as uh, provide interest on capital at some percentage. For example, you take it as 5 percentage. Interest on capital at 5 percentage. So how to calculate this? You have to calculate this 5 percentage on capital. Whatever is the capital amount on that you have to calculate. For example, I am taking the capital amount is 1 lakh rupees. On 1 lakh, you have to charge this 5 percentage. Whatever is the answer that you have to write it. So the answer will be 5000 rupees. This is the interest on capital. Okay. How to record this? This will be shown in the P&L account. Since this is an expense, we will record it in the debit side. So, to interest on capital. Okay, we will write the calculation here. Within brackets, we will write the calculation 1 lakh into 5 percentage and write the amount in the amount column. This is how we will record interest on capital in the p and account. And the next adjustment is in the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, in the liability side, the first item that we will record is capital. Okay, so in this problem, I told you I am assuming that capital is 1 lakh rupees. So from this 1 lakh rupees, we have to add interest on capital. Add interest on capital. Say 5000 rupees. Bring the answer to the outer column. 1 lakh 5000 rupees. Okay, the next adjustment is interest on drawings. Again, this will be given in the question like uh, create interest on drawings at the same. I am taking this 5 percentage for example, 5 percentage. So on what value we have to charge this 5 percentage? You have to charge it on the drawings amount, the amount of drawings. So you take the amount of drawings to be 10,000 rupees. For example, 10,000 is the amount of drawings. So 5 by 100 will give you. 500 rupees is the amount of drawings. Where will be recorded? We will record it in the credit side of the P&L account by interest on drawings. Again, we have to show the calculation here. 10,000 into 5 percentage. That calculation will be shown here within brackets in the particular column and write the amount in the outer column. 500 rupees. And how to bring it to the balance sheet. See in the balance sheet already we have 1 lakh 5000 rupees. Now this interest on drawings must be deducted less interest on drawings. How much is drawings? 500 rupees. Deduct this amount, bring the answer to the outer column. Okay. The next adjustment is goods distributed as free samples. How to treat this adjustment? This is a kind of advertisement. We are giving our products as free samples, as free of cost to our customers. So this is a kind of advertisement. How to treat this? See in the trading account in the debit side, we will record two purchases and write the amount in the inner column. Detect the worth of goods distributed as free samples. Write the amount in the inner column. Bring the total to the outer column. Okay, from the purchases, we are deducting the value of free samples that have been distributed. And 
the next effect i told you in the beginning that is for every adjustment there will be two effect one in the trading account and balance sheet or otherwise in the pnl account and the balance sheet but only for this adjustment balance sheet will not be affected at all okay the first adjustment is given in the trading account and the next adjustment will be in the pnl account in the pnl account we will have advertisement okay write the amount in the inner column add this free samples to it add this free samples to it bring the answer to the outer column okay this increases the cost of advertisement already we have done an advertisement for this amount now we are distributing free samples worth this amount so the total advertisement cost is this much okay we have purchased this much value of goods and we have distributed this much cost of goods as free samples we did not collect money from them so we are deducting the purchases value and bringing the amount to the outer column understood okay the next adjustment is goods taken by the proprietor for personal use here the owner of the business proprietor means the owner the owner of the business is drawing goods he is not taking cash if he is taking cash that is cash drawings this is also drawings this is also drawings but instead of cash the proprietor is taking goods so how to adjust it this will also reduce the purchases value so in the trading account in the debit side two purchases write the amount of purchases in the inner column did it goods taken by the proprietor goods taken by the proprietor write the amount in the inner column deduct it from purchases bring the answer to the outer column okay the next adjustment is in the balance sheet in the balance sheet we will record capital write the amount in the inner column drawings we will deduct it less drawings write the amount in the inner column bring the answer to the outer column okay this is how we will treat goods distributed as samples and goods taken by the proprietor for personal use the next adjustment that i have taken is bad debts bad debts is again a very important adjustment just like closing stock bad debts is also a repeated adjustment okay so bad debts is a, a kind of a loss to the business and we will record it in the debit side of the profit and loss account this bad debts adjustment uh, if you listen carefully you will understand it though it seems a bit difficult it is very easy only so bad debts whatever is given in the trial balance in the question trial balance whatever is given you write it in the inner column okay if you are asked to calculate new bad debts okay in the adjustment if it is given as uh, create new bad debts for this amount then you have to add it with the bad debts this amount will be given in the adjustment okay this is given in the trial balance this is given in the adjustment add it you will get one answer with this answer if you have any new bad new provision for bad and doubtful debts given in the adjustment then you add that value also you will get one answer if there is any existing provision for bad and doubtful debts in the trial balance deduct it you will get the final amount i will explain this once again in this bad debts is given in the trial balance in the question in the trial balance you are given bad debts and in the question in the trial balance you are given provision for bad and doubtful debts both is given in the question okay and in the adjustment you are asked to calculate new bad debts and you are asked to calculate provision for bad and doubtful debts if everything is given how will you calculate this is how you have to calculate you start with the bad debts as per the trial balance add new bad debts which is given in the adjustment add new bad new provision for bad and doubtful debts that is given in the adjustment deduct the bad debts that provision for bad and doubtful debts that is given in the trial balance this is the format now you can ask me ma'am if any one is not given say in the question this existing trial balance is not given this is not given in the question but all these three are there you just skip this step 
you have to skip this okay or if this is not given provision new provision for bad and doubtful debts is not given you just skip this part bad debts add new bad debts less existing provision for bad and doubtful debts so if you know this format you can just fill in the blanks here okay and what is the adjustment how will we treat it in the balance sheet in the balance sheet we will show it as a deduction from debtors in the asset side we will have debtors from this debtors we will deduct bad debts okay we will deduct bad debts and bring the answer to the outer column bad debts is a very important adjustment so i hope you understood this the next adjustment is discount on debtors and discount on creditors okay when we allow discount discount of debtors is we are allowing discount here we are receiving discount from our creditors when we are allowing discount it is a kind of a loss and we will record it in the debit side if we are receiving discount it will be recorded in the credit side okay so here we will write it as to discount on debtors write the amount in the amount column and in the balance sheet from the debtors you will have one value as debtors from the debtors you deduct this discount on debtors you deduct this discount on debtors bring the answer to the outer column and here discount on creditors will be shown in the credit side by discount on creditors write the amount in the amount column and here in the balance sheet from creditors we will have one amount as creditors from the creditors we will deduct this discount on creditors deduct it bring the answer to the outer column so this is a very simple adjustment the next adjustment is depreciation so depreciation is also a very important adjustment and a very easy adjustment also so we charge depreciation on fixed assets on all our fixed assets we can charge depreciation how will it be given in the adjustment it will be given as for example charge depreciation on machinery on machinery at 10 percentage or charge depreciation on furniture at 5 percentage likewise it will be given in the question so how to do it if it is given on machinery you should take the value of machinery on the value of machinery you will charge 10 percentage if it is for furniture on the value of furniture you will charge this 5 percentage so on the respective asset we will create depreciation and where will we show it we will show it in the debit side of the pnl account to depreciation on whatever asset we are creating say on machinery okay do the calculation here say the value of machinery is 1 lakh on 1 lakh 10 percentage so it will be 10000 rupees and the next adjustment is in the asset side of the balance sheet from the respective asset here we are calculating uh depreciation on machinery so from machinery we will deduct depreciation and bring the answer to the outer column so from the respective asset we will deduct the amount of depreciation and bring the answer to the outer column so this is the summary which i showed you in the beginning closing stock it will be credited to pnl account and it will be shown in the asset side of the balance sheet likewise i have put down the summary a table uh, with which you will be able to recollect what we have uh, seen in this video so hope you found this video useful thank you for watching